Hello everyone, welcome to Sayuna Mar with soul messages in nature. Well, it's not really nature, but there's a candle and a flame. And we do need the flame now and the fire. And look, there's this beautiful violet flame of transmutation and healing. And that is what we need now. Because there is a lot of shame and guilt around sexuality on our planet right now. And there is a lot of fear and pain around sexuality. But we do need sexuality and we always feel the desire and the pull towards expressing our sexuality. If it's not by a physical union or by lovemaking, then it is by painting, making music or any kind of art cooking, any way with dancing, any way we can express our sexual energy because we have so much of it and sexuality is creation and also sexuality is the one thing that when you merge with your divine partner, with your sacred divine counterpart, if it is a sacred sexuality that you're experiencing you're also experiencing to be enveloped in the ultimate love and the consciousness the light the oneness with all to feel free from the constraints of a planet to feel floaty in the cosmos to feel the bliss and this is where all of us are longing for yearning for and we are searching everywhere by all kinds of people and you know what we usually feel attracted to the people who have the vibrations of our divine masculine or feminine how can that be? Because we have so many relationships that are F up or painful or empty or not fulfilling, isn't it? So how can it be that many of those people, those humans or those souls that we have had relations with had a vibration of our divine masculine? Well, that is because our divine masculine or feminine I'm speaking to the collective, so both. So, our divine counterpart, I will say, has been incarnating and has been a human being and has been wounded either by the family bloodline it has been born into or anyone else on the planet and by the collective energy. Anyway, if you are born on the planet, you will be consumed even by it. So, how can we heal from all these woundings? Well, first of all, it's needed to see the deeper cause and the deeper happenings beyond just the simple emotions. So, What is behind this all? I can feel this is a very painful and deep subject. I can hear it in my voice. But what is the cause behind all of this? Where did it begin? Where did one begin to hurt or abuse the other sexually? Where did the one begin to dominate the other one? And to not respect, to disrespect their boundaries. And where did the first person start to disrupt the sacred sexuality? And as well as with the good things, also with the bad things, we have the morphic resonance, which means when one knows all now, 
So as I said, when you are born on the planet, even when you yourself might not have been abused sexually, you still feel the collective shame and guilt and distortion about, around it, and you will hear around, about it wherever you go. It's like cancer, and it can eat you from the inside. Because many times when something like this happened to you, or when you have been the perpetrator, those feelings of shame and guilt and denial are within you. And you usually hold it within yourself. Deep feelings for the victim of fear, shame, disgust, feeling to reject their own body or reject their sexuality. And it could also be reject the sex that has abused them, so either feminine or masculine. But what is really behind this? Where did it start? All the pain, all the suffering, so much pain, so much suffering, and it's still going on. And I don't even want to talk about children or beloved poor children being abused. And yes, I know that we are brave souls for experience and learning, and we also come here to help heal those wounds and in the family lines, but then still, what is going on? Because this is not human nature. This is not human nature. Human nature is something much more divine. And human natures, humans are not beasts. So who are those beasts? Well, the Pleiadians, when I asked the Pleiadians um, about who were the first one to come to the earth to disrupt, corrupt everything and to enter in and to start to manipulate and to bring in all those horrible, cruel frequencies, then the Pleiadian told me they call them the vagabonds, vagabond. And so the vagabonds are the ones that have no home. And why they have no home? Because their home was destroyed. Their home was Maldek. They have been going to Mars to seek How you call the word <sighs> to have a new home there I do not know exactly what happened but I think they will have been let in in certain realms of Mars certain places for a while but it was not their home Asylum, that was the word that I was looking for so then they came to earth. Not that they just could walk into the earth. As I told in another video. A lot of high evolved beings from other planets and star systems came to earth. To experiment. With their higher knowledge. And especially the priests from Orion. Which were so bright, so powerful in their understanding of creation and the connectiveness from earth when you make the sacred buildings, the sacred geometry aligned with the stars. And so then Something happened that there was too much, as what I've told before, if there's too much voltage, if there's too much voltage, if there is an overload, 
you get a short circuit. Well, something like that has happened with the protection layer around the Earth, so that those beings could come through the fourth dimension to the Earth. Those beings that the Pleiadians tell me are called vagabonds. Right? Those vagabonds were away from love, disconnected. They sought to be gods themselves and to control and rule. But as they were disconnected from the source, from the love, they could not feed from love. And they could not live and thrive without having another source. So their source became to be fear and suffer. Those vagabonds, you could also call them the fallen angels or Luciferians. They have also known the secret about splitting of atoms. And then they've also started to make the false religions on the planet for control and divide, but secretly hidden, all the people were worshipping them. They were making the story around them. And every sacred script that was written by real prophets and high evolved beings such as the person Jeshua, the Christed Jeshua, Every story and every sacred thing was turned around and used against. So, always in the front of your eyes and never completely different, they just use a part of it and then turn it around against. So, the same what they did with all the sacred scripts and they made religions, even when Christ, when the Christ had won, was not a Christian. And when the Buddha was not a Buddhist. And so forth. They did that, of course, again to divide people. If you understand how powerful you are just by you alone, and then pulling in all your multidimensional selves, and then connect with your entire soul family, and then connect with all soul families on the entire planet and beyond, <laughs> it's no wonder that they were seeking to divide. How else can they control? So, as I said, they understood the secret of the splitting of atoms, which was a very strict secret. And it was not present on earth. They brought it to earth. And that's what they call Adam and Eve, which is Atom. And that from Adam's body, Eve was created. The splitting of atoms, those two. The same has happened with twin flames. They were once one. And even when they were in two bodies, they were still one. Their sacred sexuality was their holiness to the oneness, always. That was their altar. That was the portal. The feminine was the portal through which both of them, via sacred lovemaking and via the spirit, the consciousness of the masculine, could rise up, could reunion, reunite with the consciousness not only of themselves being the God and the Goddess, but of the, con the cosmos, the ultimate source of love and consciousness. And they were free. 
that is what you want, isn't it, Divine Masculine? You want to be free. And as I said in the other video, about all the troubles already the Divine Masculine have had, and so much pain, and then they have been feeling stuck or trapped in relationship within their family or friendships or work or romantic relationships they have felt so trapped but in the end they have felt trapped within their own body and they have felt trapped on the earth and all they want is freedom but as those vagabonds came to earth with that secret, that forbidden secret, which was not an apple, although apple came forth out of it in the end, which I mean the electronics, the computer programming. So, so they knew about the splitting of atoms, and then what did they do? They split the Divine Masculine and the Divine Feminine. Not their bodies, not their souls, but their sexuality. And the sexuality is what really binds the two. Even when the Divine Masculine is the consciousness and the love, and the Divine Feminine is the love and the consciousness, they need each other for merging the consciousness and the love to come together and merge into the cosmos into the source into the ocean of unconditional love and awareness of consciousness that was their bliss that was their bond together that was their trust for each other it was the most sacred holy of holy. And that is what those vagabonds took from them. They lured the divine feminine into and manipulated her by priests probably. Because priests and scientists had always been the problems and used against that Divine Feminine didn't know anything about rape or abuse. The Divine Feminine was full of trust and completely open. She 100% trusted her Divine Masculine. But those vagabonds used some priests and manipulated them that they needed to have sex with a divine feminine, I cannot call it make love, sex with a divine feminine, so they can merge with God and be gods. Those priests, they were not humans. Those priests were their helpers, so to say. They were like the ants have those leaves that they milk. So they were like cattle. There were the fleas on their bodies. And they possessed those priests. Those priests have been either a human body, a human being who has been possessed by those horrible monsters, demons, or those demons shapeshifted to pretend they were a priest. In any way, shape or form, they raped the Divine Feminine. 
and then they blamed the Divine Masculine for doing so. Then the Divine Masculine could not trust his Divine Feminine anymore and he blamed himself for not looking after her better, for leaving her alone with those priests. And the Divine Feminine also felt ashamed and embarrassed so much that she could not face anymore the Divine Masculine. They both felt not good enough for each other anymore. Their all purity, the sacredness was gone. They could not find their way back to each other and to God. And the shame, the fear, the guilt, the shock, the trauma was so deep that it disrupted their etheric body. And through their etheric body they too could be possessed. There too could the, the entities, the blood suckers, the vampires, suck their energies and possess them to give them those negative thoughts and impulses. Even though every time again and again they try to find each other or the purity, they couldn't find it. And then when they paid their karma, when they did everything good what they could think about and then tried to find each other, they still couldn't. They never felt pure and they never could find each other because there was always fear between them and their natural magnetic pull that pulled them towards each other now pushed each other away because the fear, the guilt and the shame is the opposite of love. So there was only chasing and running now and there was only hiding in shame. And of course, there is much more poetic way of telling the story, but it's good to just have a perspective, a different view and understanding of where this first pain came from. And when I listened to an audio more than 15 years ago of somebody who described something about something like this. I was resonating because also I have been taken to few by my higher guidance, to few certain ceremonies and rituals that those dark ones are doing. One of them Yes, okay. I will tell it, okay. So one of them was a church where there were, or a temple. Yes, it was a temple. And it was in Egypt. Or something that looks like Egypt. And there was a lot of priests and there was a lot of new humans who were initiated to become a priest student. They were initi in initiated into priest priesthood and these poor innocent, really innocent because they have the best intentions and they trusted the priest because they were so blackmailed and brainwashed and frightened that the only thing they could do is finding their faith in the God that was told them who was the God that would save them. Otherwise they would go to hell and be burned, not knowing they were in hell already. And they were listening to the rules of hell. So there the ghosts, the priests, and what I was showed when I have been viewing, 
remote viewing was those priests one by one were taking into a very big large room a large floor where one by one by one would be I'm not going to describe the details but they would be sexually assaulted traumatized and still there were those dark ones those monsters telling them that it's all right the typically really false unspeakable manipulative way of talking to confuse your mind as if your emotions are not, not real if they don't matter they ridicule, ridicule you just only further and so they came out traumatized and even more disconnected from their heart from their higher chakras or their lower chakras depending if it was a feminine or masculine and everything was disrupted their etheric astral body they couldn't travel anymore they were possessed and if they would travel out of their body then even more parasites could come in because they needed to be in the body and that's always been the secret you need to be in your body to be safe in your body on the earth as soon as you have a trauma and there is a place in you that does not possess your own body something else will possess you that is why it's really important to be completely present in present in all parts of yourself so the splitting of atom which we all now has also happened with the material but i'm now talking even if it happened that the so-called gods have split the body into polarities but this i don't know that could also be that the divine creator has done this for any reason at all because i do not really believe that they can have so much power even over the body but what they did do was disrupting and disrespecting and destroying the sacred sexuality so only the people who were born in the planet which were completely present within the body and were so powerful so strong so bright that despite all of the corruption they could still connect with the love they could still heal themselves so much that they could feel the love and forgive themselves and the other some of them have had been able to merge with their divine feminine and ascend back into the higher dimensions and all the rest have stayed trapped and even when they didn't have a divine feminine on earth then at least they had a divine feminine who were helping them to ascend who was on another planet or in another star system because the man and the woman the feminine and the masculine both need each other within in harmony to ascend and i'm not talking about outside yourself finding somebody but if inside yourself the divine feminine and the divine masculine have conflict don't trust each other are not in harmony if you can only function either from the masculine or either from the feminine and not together in harmony 
then you can never have a harmonious, harmonious relationship with somebody else outside you. Then you can never trust somebody outside you. And so, from all of the hurt and the manipulations in all of those lifetimes, the feminine, feminines with their high intuition have mostly been damaged by, by their higher gifts, their higher senses, their upper three chakras, and the masculine by their lower three chakras. Because the masculine were the protectors from all the life. And they didn't feel worthy anymore. They had not protect their feminine and the creation. Like they should, that's what they felt. So they feel the deep guilt. And the divine feminine, she felt naive. She felt she shouldn't trust. She was stupid to trust. She should know better. But she didn't know what happens because you cannot know what happens if you don't know, if you have never experienced it before, if it just doesn't exist in your existence. In existence. And also, she has been manipulated and she thought it was her divine masculine. She really thought that. And, she, and, and when she realized it wasn't, it was too late. She was locked up. And they were overpowering her with their physical strength. And I recall the story of that woman. She made it so that the woman belonged to a feminine circle. And those women have also allowed her to be with the priests and uh, they also trusted the priests but they felt there was something a bit strange about what they wanted to do and they left the room because they needed to be alone and then once they left the room then the room was closed and they couldn't come back in and they heard the feminine crying and screaming and they couldn't help so they were all traumatized and shocked. And so whatever your story, what story you believe, whatever your thoughts around it all is, it doesn't matter. You can see it as a story, right? But the whole storyline is that there is guilt and shame. And I do not feel that the human nature can do such a thing without being possessed by those monsters. And those monsters are so false so tricky they know exactly what is your weak point what is your desire and they use it against you because they knew when they could do that when they could succeed in disrupting that they would have the power over humanity they could enslave them and they were trapped. They couldn't find a way back to God. And instead of having their sacred sexuality to return to God or goddess or divine, however you want to call it, I would like to call it the source of love and consciousness. And so instead they had learned to pray to a God which was actually those creatures who only went to corrupt them further and further by implanting via vaccinations and via liquids directly into their spine or in their blood which your body always will prevent from anything entering in your blood directly that is attacking or poisonous anyways directly in your blood and in your spine genetic manipulation and genetic from themselves 
and they went to corrupt further and further and they changed the DNA structure the humanity descended to lower and lower and lower and forgot more and more about that they were the original god and goddesses and the gods forgot the human the divine masculine they forgot the divine feminine was their passage to freedom and the divine feminine although she might have remembered because of her intuition but she couldn't trust him anymore so she always kept closing herself off even in the most intimate relationships she was not capable of surrendering her completely she was not capable of enjoying in ecstasy in full surrender completely anymore only some rare relationships with some rare men who knew how much patience the feminine needs to feel trust again how much she needs to feel safe again and protected only in those times and relations they might have experienced something beautiful like that so the time of the luciferians the the monsters the fallen angels or those from outer space out of the universes wherever they came from that the pleiadians call vagabonds who has came in who has come in into the earth those are the ones that are the, the original sin and they are the ones that have done the original sin to us it is not the fault of the woman and it's not the fault of the man but we have been set up against each other and we have been divided and we have been used to feed them with our sovereign with our sexual energy our most precious sexual energy which they have consumed from us from us and our children because the sexual energy is an energy of creation and they could not create by themselves so they needed our sexuality our energy but not a high vibrational energy it was a low vibrational energy of fear and of suffering and of pain and of despair and of anger and rage and all of it you know it we are full of it all of us are full of it our bodies are full of it all our memor cellular memory is full of it and now we are all in the process of letting it go letting that old cloak of the third dimension go healing all our wounds all of those who have healed their wounds enough to guide others then you need to stand up and come forward and help others and have compassion and patience and educate because the fear the shame and the guilt needs to go now with the jupiter saturnus alignment it was the return of the sun and the actual sun the sun that you see in the sky the bright sun which is the channel for the great central sun and channels all the energies of the great central sun which from we all have birthed as our souls all our souls have been birthed from the great central sun and that is where the great source of love and consciousness 
the endless ocean is. And now the sun is radiating that beautiful consciousness and love to us, the source of everything, the birthplace of our soul. So we remember and the ozone layer is disappearing because we do not need the protection anymore because the earth is now turning towards the sun, towards the source of love and consciousness and taking in her rightful place as the galactic citizen, the galactic star. She's a beautiful water pearl. She's ascending. She already ascended. We already ascended. All that's left for us to do is shed our old skin and take our consciousness back into the fifth dimensional consciousness and reality and create our new experiences. And we need to clean up the planet and we need to heal all our wounds. But already the victory has been ours for over a decade. Since 2008, it was already known that we were victorious over the darkness. And they have only tried to delay our process and to fight their last fights and battles. But their source is diminishing and diminishing as we rise of vibration and we're not feeding them anymore. We do not give them any more fear. We do not give them any more shame. We do not give them any more guilt. We don't give them anger. We don't give them attention. And we are now starting to learn that the sexuality, the porn industry, everything that has this, the disrupted sexuality, everything that has been the doing of those Vaticans, vampires, vagabonds, fallen angels, however you want to call it, we are now understanding what is our divine blueprint and we're taking back our sexuality and all the energy that they have to taken from us and they have existed from for so long, for so many eons, 26,000 years minimum, that will all return back to us. And so Yes, the ozone layer is disappearing and we are starting to breathe in ozone. But the earth gets a new protective layer, a crystalline protective layer. And she's ascending. And ascended, she cannot be harmed or approached by anything of the lower vibration. It's simply not possible. And as... Planet Jupiter and Saturnus were aligning. All of the planets and stars and suns and moons were aligning. All of the galaxy is ascending. Everything is ascending. Everything is arising. All of the universe is arising. Because all is mirroring each other. All is connected. So what is inside of us is in everywhere, every molecule and every thing outside of us, every planet and universe, in the smallest and in the biggest happening. And that is why what is happening right now on our earth is the biggest spectacle of the ages. And not only the planets were aligning and returning, and not only Mother Earth is returning towards the sun, the great central sun and the love and the divine, but we are also, and we are also now finally healing those wounds, those deepest, deepest seated traumas and pain of every lifetime after lifetime incarnating in the body, trying to find each other, but they have implanted us with sex slave implants, and either you were the perpetrator or the victim, and some of us played the saviour stand by and looking or trying to help but never really helped because that cannot be done 
other than from the inside of, you, of the being who needs help. They need to heal. Everybody needs to do the work inside. It's really an individual job. Nobody else can do it for you. But you have a million, a million, a million of beings standing with you to help you. Call in the light. Call in the love in any moment. The strength is with you. The strength is with you. Keep it with you. Don't give away your power anymore. Don't give in in fear. The darkness is dissolving, diminishing. And we are rising and rising and they cannot exist in this high vibration. And if you want to protect yourself, and if you want to save yourself, then that is what you need to do. Heal your inner wounds and traumas so you can return back to your divine feminine. Because not only twin flames, who are the same soul in two bodies, have their divine counterpart, but all humanity have their divine counterpart. You all have a divine masculine and a divine feminine, who are the ultimate divine couple to merge together. And you have your soul family standing with you. They help you in the physical and they help you from other planets and stars. You can hear them calling because the telepathy, which is our original language, which original way of communicating, I mean, is returning as well. So we can hear and understand each other again. All right, this message has been very long. But Divine Masculine and the Divine Feminine Twin Flames, I want to call and ask you, please remember, please remember, please remember and heal. Because as you heal, this is catapulting, this is like a domino effect for the rest of humanity to heal. So it will speed up and nobody has to suffer anymore. Because time is running out, time is speeding up. As we are approaching the zero, the now moment, where everything exists at the same time. And then the portals will be closed. They will be closing in. And then the shift will happen. The fifth dimensional Mother Earth, she will shift. She will be closed off from everything of the fourth and third dimension. And there is time. And we have time and it doesn't happen in a day. And we probably need another couple of years to complete this divine work. But it will be very soon. And sooner, the more people of us, the more, first of all, divine feminine and divine masculine twin flames come together in love, they will affect millions. All right? And that is what, of course, Jesus has done. The Christ of Jesus with his divine feminine Maria Magdalene. And that's why he ascended. And all the story about crusading him, you can believe it or not. And it can be reality on another timeline. Because there are always a lot of different timelines happening. I'm just explaining something from my own understanding and channelings. Messages that I download, which the Pleiadians help me with. And my own understanding and experience of my soul. And then... And we all can be free again and merge. With each other as a divine couple with the cosmos, with the source, with our divine beloved father and mother divine and be home. So we're going to clean up our own mess, the mess around us. Everything is already in place and it is not from the robotic, the robotic races, the scientific stuff about phones and laptops and cars and everything that can pollute or disrupt your energy field. No, no, no. We have the plasma energy. We have the prana. We have the universal cosmic love energy. 
We have the sacred sexuality coming back. We have the telepathy. And we have all of our higher senses coming back. So we can feel, we can hear, we can see and we can know. Beyond the, beyond the doubt and not be fooled by our five senses anymore. All right, the longest message ever. There will always be more things that I want to add or say, but that will come in another message. If I'm guided to, and a lot of downloads and codes within this message that will further help enlighten your brain and mind and understanding your higher mind will then download within your inner knowing and open yourself for the divine feminine intuition. Follow your intuition. Only takes what resonates and have discernment and follow love only. And my divine masculine, I so admire your incredible high attractive mind you have such a powerful mind and it's so interesting for me to feel and I'm so in awe of you and I so much love you and await you or your arrival and our union and I thank you all for listening bye bye for now <laughs>